Hey guys, how's it going? I wanted to do a follow-up video to the last one I posted on the Camaro. Um, when I talked about the uh, the wheel and tire setup on my 16 2SS. So we went with the 275 35s in the front, 285 35s in the back. Um, since that video, I've done one track day and I wanted to do a follow-up video to talk about something else that I'm actually uh, working on now to kind of improve the performance and tire wear while I'm at the track. So the our cars, if you don't know, they're capable of a camber adjustment. I think, um, pretty sure it's two degrees either way. So two degrees positive or two degrees negative. <clears throat> so I think from the factory, they're pretty much even at zero degrees. So I already adjusted this one as far in as it would go. So that should be negative two degrees. And if you can see, I'm gonna hold up my yardstick here for a point of reference. But there's a, a decent size gap um, in between the side, you know, the side fender here in the tire. So obviously the top is more inward a couple degrees and then the, the bottom is out, you know, sticking out a little bit more. Now, the reason you obviously wanna do that, you can see after my track day here recently, I was, I was rubbing, um, it was rubbing all the way down to here on hard cornering. So I was at pit race in Wampum PA uh, five sessions, 20 minute sessions, so quite a few laps, and I was pushing it pretty hard. I think I was running like 205s, 206s. Um, and it's getting all the way down here, so I'm gonna try to keep the wear right up here on the actual tread. Not so, you know, it's getting a little too close to the sidewall. <clears throat> so for comparison's sake, so there's, there's the one I already did, and then I'm gonna go ahead and, and show you the process of doing it on the driver's side, but let's just look before I make any changes. Let's look at the camber here, which is, should be close to zero. And if you notice the tire sidewall is pretty, pretty close to being lined up with the, um, the side fender here. So if we hold up the stick, There's not much of a gap. I can get that to focus a little bit, but not much of a gap. Let's go back to the other side again. And you can see there's definitely more of a gap here. So, I mean, I don't know as though you would wanna drive like this on the street all the time. You could always, you know, when you're not not during track season, um, maybe maybe adjust the back. It's pretty easy, you'll see here in a minute. But I, I think on the track, it's gonna give me a way better traction and, and less wear here, closer to the sidewall. Stay here on the tread. All right, so let's get to it. So when I jack up the car, I like to use uh, one of these things and it'll fit right underneath here. And it just, it just helps prevent damaging the um, underside of the car when you jack it up. Uh, let's see here. But it's gonna fit right here in between um, that, those two pieces right here, so. it'll fit just like that and then that way it's pushing out more against the frame and you won't bend this piece right here all right so we got the wheel off and I'm gonna take a look at the, the bolts here to adjust the camber so you've got the upper bolts and then the lower bolts uh, really where where the movement is gonna be is gonna be up here so you can see right now, you can kind of you can see where the bolt's at. And we're gonna push, we're gonna push this bolt, you know, this whole screw, but it's gonna go back just a little bit. It, it doesn't seem like much, but when you put the wheel back on, you'll definitely notice a difference. So 
Uh, this, these, like this black piece here, and then the inner piece here, it's pretty, pretty flush. This is gonna go back a little bit. Um, these, for the most part, won't move. Um, to be, to get this to move, we're gonna use a hammer here. Once I loosen, loosen the bottom one up a little bit, this one a little bit more, pound on the hammer a little bit so that we can push it back. Uh, so you can use a torque. Uh, you can use your torque gun. Uh, so I've got my my Dewalt here, and then the bit that you're gonna need, I believe, is a. It's right here. A fifteen sixteenths socket, and uh, that's gonna fit over your bolts. And I had enough power in my low setting to uh, loosen these up. So see, see if it's there real nice. So we're gonna start with the bottom, loosen that up just a little bit, and then we'll do this one a little bit more. Okay, so we got the bolts a little bit loosened with the um, impact wrench. I'm gonna just get them a little bit more. probably good enough for the bottom and then the top we're gonna go out a little bit further all right so we got the top bolt out quite a bit now what we're gonna do is take our hammer because we want to create some space here on the um, this side of the bolt and we're gonna take our hammer and strike it a few times right here So you can see we've created a gap there, a little bit of a gap there. Now, if we push on the top of the rotor here, you'll see that we can pull it out. So that's positive camber. It's out, and then I'm gonna push it in for the negative camber. Now, it doesn't look like a huge change, but once we, um, let me get it to focus here. Once we uh, tighten this back up, this bolt's gonna sit back a little bit further, and you know it's gonna create the same effect that we had on the other side. Um, now, if you wanna be precise, you can use like a camber adjusting bolt here. Um, I think you can get one from GM. And <clears throat> that you can, you can screw this in and it'll push up against this. You can get precise, but everything I've read, if you push this all the way in, you're gonna get negative um, two degrees of camber. So, so everything's pushed in. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten things back up. I'm gonna take the hammer now and hit it here and, and push this back over. And then we'll tighten to this side. And again, it's gonna be, you wanna start with the bottom, tighten that up to 111 foot pound. And then we're gonna do the top 111 foot pound. And then you do another 90 degrees if you can with like a breaker bar. And then the same thing up here. Uh, something I probably should make a note of when you when you do take your wheels off after a track day, um, it's not a bad idea just to inspect everything, especially your brakes. So inspect your rotors, look for any you know uh, big cracking. I mean, I have some little hairline ones in here from the heat, but nothing too crazy yet. And then inspect your pads. Probably the best way to do it is over here. You can see on the top. You can see how much pad life you have left. And uh, that doesn't look too bad. And that doesn't look too bad. It's funny, the from all the heat, the plates, the um, coating or whatever they put on the back of the path, it really just like, the heat just killed it. Um, but I think these should be fine for another track day or two. All right, so at this point I've only just hand tightened the, um, well, with my small smaller socket, I hand tightened the bottom uh, bolt um, and kind of help make sure I kept the top part pushed in but you can see the slight movement uh, forward in towards the cabin um, of the bolt just it looks very subtle here but you'll notice that uh, once you put the wheel back on I'm gonna set the uh, torque wrench here to 111 foot-pounds go ahead and tighten up bottom and upper bolts 
I actually used a little extender here because um, this torque wrench is pretty long. So it gives you a little more room to work with here over top of the rotor. And now I'm gonna use the breaker bar to get that extra 90 degree turn. Okay, everything's tight. And just double check that it didn't move back. So it's still pushed inward from the original position. So we should have the negative camera that we're looking for. We'll go ahead and put the wheel on and see how it looks. We got both sides done. Let's do a little comparison. Uh, obviously we already looked at this one. So just as a reminder, how much more in the top part of the tire is from the fender. Let's go look at the driver's side now. Let's use our yardstick here to see. So if you remember in the beginning of the video, this was really close to um, touching the tire yardstick in you can see how much further out it is. So when we're cornering, we should get way more of the contact patch of the tire and not so much, um, you know, not so much roll over to the, the sidewall. So I have another track day coming up at Mid-Ohio here at the end of the month, and we will see how it does. I'll, uh, you know, maybe post a quick update video um, on how it felt and we'll see after you know those five sessions in mid-ohio i'm sure it's going to get pretty worn but hopefully you know it's just the contact patch that wears and not you know i shouldn't get too much more wear down here especially not all the way down to the almost the side wall all right well thanks for watching i am gonna as always anytime you do any work in your car check it for a little test drive and uh, make sure everything feels all right